Good afternoon, my name is Simon Rule. I'm a haematologist here in sunny Plymouth, UK, uh, and a professor at the local medical school. And what I'm going to do is discuss a case of a, a young woman who had classical mantle cell lymphoma, who had a good initial response and then relapsed early, and the issues around how one manages tricky mantle cell lymphoma in a younger patient. So this is a 57-year-old lady who presented to her local general practitioner with a, a lump in her left breast. It was totally asymptomatic and she went through the usual uh, management of a, a breast lump, going to the local hospital, having an FNA, which didn't diagnose breast cancer and so she had a lumpectomy. Uh, at lumpectomy the diagnosis was of classical mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, key 67 was 20%. She was completely asymptomatic. So at that stage I saw the lady, she'd had no staging beyond an ultrasound which showed some lymphadenopathy in, in her axilla. We staged her by CT scan, she had reasonably uh, bulky disease with uh, lymph nodes on both sides of the diaphragm. But no real symptoms. She had lost some weight but um, in, in retrospect she'd lost a significant amount of weight but I think she was quite happy to have lost weight, she didn't make a big deal of it. Uh, she didn't have night sweats or fevers. Um, continuing staging, she had bone marrow involvement, uh, but her lymphocyte count was normal. We didn't do a PET scan. Um, you might ask why not do a PET scan. Well, PET scanning actually doesn't add to conventional staging by way of CT scan because it's not very good at seeing bowel or bone marrow disease. So she was stage four by conventional criteria. She was an intermediate risk MIPI. You could make an argument in an asymptomatic woman who had disease like this to watch and wait. She did have reasonably bulky disease though, lymph node masses three to four centimeters, and she was quite glad she wanted some treatment, which was fine. So the treatment of choice for a young person like this would be to give them a cytarabine containing regimen. There are a number of those. It's not clear which is the best, but we use a Nordic type approach, so high dose RSC with uh, rituximab and dexamethasone alternating with CHOP. Uh, she rapidly went into a complete remission, as defined by CT scanning, and then had that remission consolidated with a beam autologous transplant. Pretty uneventful clinical course, no real major problems, um, not significant issues from a infection perspective. So left hospital relatively quickly. She, she didn't have anything in the way of maintenance following the autograft, as yet there's no definitive evidence for the use of rituximab maintenance following an autologous transplant, although there may be at some point in the near future. Uh, unfortunately, nine months after the transplant, she relapsed with a further lump in the breast, which was rebiopsied and was exactly the same as the original biopsy. So, Classical mantle cell lymphoma, low key 67. So it hadn't transformed into a more aggressive phenotype, and the key 67 had not become uh, higher. Restaging, again, uh, stage 4 disease, uh, pretty much as it was at diagnosis, but she did have some symptoms, and the, the clinical course seemed to be a little bit more aggressive from her perspective in that. She was developing sweats, she was losing weight. And I think in retrospect, she had all those symptoms the first time around, but she wasn't really aware of what that all meant. So what's the option there? Um, she's got no siblings. So really the goal of therapy is to get this woman into some form of remission and then, if possible, consolidate it with an allogeneic transplant. Her outcome is pretty poor because she's relapsed relatively early after a, an autologous transplant. So the best chance of a long-term remission would be some form of allogeneic procedure. So no siblings, so you're looking at an unrelated donor search and you're looking at selecting a regimen that will get her back into remission, hopefully quickly and a uh, reasonable depth of remission. So what are your options? Well, she's received RSC. Okay, she's only had three cycles of RSC, but she's received CHOP, so you have a number of other chemotherapy regimens you could choose from, bend and musty I guess being uh, first amongst those. You could use a pure analog combination. You could go back and use RSC again and then you've got some of the newer agents um, and 
I'm talking to you from the UK, what's available to me might be different to a number of uh, agents that you might have in, in, in other countries, particularly in North America. So I like Velcade. Velcade Velcade's a very good drug. Uh, it's very active, and I like in, I like adding it to, to cytarabine. Um, and an alternative approach to doing that, so taking the, the, the RSC and adding Velcade uh, subcutaneously, that's some of the works very quickly in, in, in young patients. What we actually did was use bendamustine, um, RSC, and dexamethasone with rituximab, so the R back regimen, as recently disco, um, described from the Italian group. Now, whilst that's described for older patients um, with mental cell lymphoma, I found it very active even in slightly younger patients. So while this woman isn't old, she's in her late 50s, and she's got no comorbidities, bendamustine was a drug she hadn't been exposed to. RSC, I find a very effective drug. So that combination, uh, again, uh, we, we, we tried and worked spectacularly well. So she had um, two cycles. Well, after one cycle, all her peripheral lymphadenopathy lymphadenopathy and the breast lesions completely disappeared. We gave her four cycles in total whilst we were uh, working her up for an unrelated donor transplant and after four weeks after the fourth cycle she had an unrelated transplant. It was a fully matched um, donor from Germany actually and that was six months ago and this lady remains in a complete remission with no apparent disease from an from imaging perspective and as far as bone marrow is concerned. We, we, we don't um, have the capacity here to look terribly well at MRD from a mantle cell perspective, but of course we've got chimerism to guide us. She's not required um, any T cells from the donor. She's well, she's got not very much GBH. We removed the immunosuppression pretty quickly at day 30 because we wanted to maximise graft versus lymphoma effect, and that, that worked well with, with little GBH. So, We've got a lady who's nine months out post unrelated transplant, currently in clinical remission, having had a good response to a bendamustine combination. I'm not saying that's necessarily the right thing to do, but there are a number of potential regimens out there that are using different drugs which are going to be very useful in this setting. One, one could make an argument for other drugs, and I think drugs like abrutinib may well have a, have a role in young patients here as a, as a bridge to transplant, just as you would with with agents like rentuximab in Hodgkin's disease. And um, talking from an NHS perspective, I guess if you're, if you're looking at a limited treatment course with an expensive agent, that's usually the easiest um, place to sell it. Um, so that may well be a future role for that drug. So this one's in remission at the moment.